Welcome to Goldfish on Games and the Hungry World of Little Divil, which was developed and published by Gremlin in 1993 for MS-DOS, and after that it hit the Amiga CD32 a year or so later, and there was also a CDI edition, which I don't have. Now unlike many other CD32 games, this didn't show up on the regular Amigas, so it is a bit of a unique beast. And between the two I have here, the manual also got a bit of an upgrade, as where the plot was initially just a bit of text, in the CD32 it managed to get a nice little comic. And considering these were mostly CD games, it's a bit surprising that only the CDI release got an animated intro. And yes, you're being thrown into the labyrinths of hell to get a pizza. No delivery service? This really is the pits. To start your quest for the mystic pizza of plenty, you have to defeat a troll. And unlike the lame internet kind, you can't just block them and move on. And I think it's fair to say this is where most people will start and end their attempt at this game, as working out how to get rid of the troll isn't as easy as it should be. You can walk back and forth, and if you use one of the other directions you can take some defensive stances, which you'll have to time to avoid his attacks. But you won't get anywhere with just those moves, you have to attack, which is done by holding down the action button and pushing a direction, where you can do a low, medium and high attack. But it is going to try and block them, so you'll have to keep dodging and attacking and eventually it should just fall over the side of the bridge allowing us to get into the game proper. Which is this 3D third person style view, and it has you walking around these corridors of the dungeon. The controls are mostly the same across all the versions, up moves you into the maze, left and right moves you across the screen, and if there's a joining corridor to the maze, then it will actually turn you around so you can move in the new direction. But back does differ between the PC and the CD32. On PC, it will move you out of the screen, so basically towards us. And if you actually want to turn around, you have to do a bit of a dance around some of the intersections. And due to this being a little bit fiddly, and that walking into the screen really doesn't show you everything, it was changed on the CD32, so Mutt now just turns around. Which makes travelling around the maze so much easier. The last control you have in the maze is using the main action button to do a jump, which will help you out with all the traps, pits and other nasties that await you in the maze. Some of them are just a simple hop over to get away from, others you have to actually position yourself on the screen to avoid. And while avoiding them is obviously the right thing to do, the animations when you fail are great, and it might just be worth losing some of your health to watch them. And I say health, well, I mean it's your hunger level really which is topped up by finding random floor food. Mmm, hell floor cheese. Sanitary. You will also find bits of gold on the floor, and that is very much needed. And wait, where's he putting that cash? Is that the old prison wallet? Well, either way, you'll need that cash, as down one of the halls you'll find a door. And in that door is a shop and in that shop are items that you'll need, and explanations on what they do, it will not provide. You'll have to work that out from the various rooms that you've already explored, or mostly buying the ones you can afford as they try to make it so you can't dead end yourself. And with a few objects in hand you can kick down some other doors that will lead you to the other major gameplay style, the puzzle room. Now I say style, 
but really each puzzle room is its own thing. Like this early one, where you have to deal with this massive spider. And the solution is to spend some of that cash on an insect spray, and then while avoiding or killing the small spiders, keep spraying Shelob in the face. Eventually, if you get good, or a bit lucky with the baby spiders, you'll take it down and find the torch. Now at this point you might be thinking that the torch might be used to solve another puzzle. And you'd be wrong! As you have to collect three items in every single labyrinth to be able to leave it. And as these puzzle rooms are the core of this game, let's take a quick look at a few of them. As you have ones that are more about timing than actually solving anything. You might have to work out a maze of teleporters. Or fight against another creature. Or even a horde of them. And there is something worth remembering. You have a second action button. Quite often it will do nothing. But it might use one of your inventory items, which it'll pick the right one automatically if required, or it might just do a second action. So it's always worth experimenting with both buttons when you enter a room to work out what you can do. And there's the ones that messes with people like me who have a bad memory, as it's the repeat a long list of actions game. There's no end of inventive ways to try and stump a dog-like hero. If a room might seem impossible, then you might require an item to solve it. Or there might just be a trick to it that you've not worked out yet. Most of the puzzle rooms will give you a number of attempts to pass it before it'll kick you out. And even then, as long as your hunger level isn't too low, you can just enter it again anyway. So it is quite generous. But be careful, as you really don't want your hunger level to drop to zero as they don't take too kindly to those who fail to deliver their takeout in hell. And look, I know your food not turning up is bad, but do you really need to do that to the delivery devil? Finding the lost items aren't the only reason for you to solve the puzzles, as some rooms will then just open up new areas for you to explore and that will lead you on to more rooms and more puzzles to solve, and possibly keys that will open up doors that will lead you to more mazes and more puzzles. And the thing I'm trying to get at here is almost everything leads to more corridors to walk down and doors to kick open, until you finally make it to the exit. As we've seen, there aren't a huge number of differences between the versions of the game. The window dressing got tweaked due to resolution changes, and the DOS version uses MIDI for its music, where the CD32 got CD quality audio tracks. Which might actually just be the MIDI music, but played via an MT32. But they sound really good either way. There's also a few tweaks with the sound effects between the two, but overall they are pretty good, and really do help lift the labyrinth and make it feel alive. And it really does give Mutt some real personality as well as you can't help but feel bad for him when he gets punched in the face or steps on a trap. During your exploration you might find a room with a bed, and this allows you to save your progress, which is very useful as these labyrinths take quite some time to complete. But annoyingly you have to get past that bridge troll before you can actually load up one of your save games. But don't think just keeping your health topped up will mean that you can play this game forever, as time does play a part in it, as you have a limited amount of it to get to the end. And the Grim Reaper is there to remind you that you only have so much time left, as he will slowly stick his head out from the side of the HUD to get you. Also shown on the HUD is this nice little map that gets built up as you travel around. But it is a shame there isn't a larger version that you could toggle in-game as getting lost is still very possible. An answer to this can actually be found in the big boxed release, which contains some special graph paper for you to map out the mazes yourself. 
and after finding some maps online from an old gaming magazine, I now realise how large some of these labyrinths are. And due to its size, this game can take quite some time to complete, even if you know exactly what you're doing, as there's 5 levels in total. So that's a lot of corridors for you to walk around, and unfortunately they all look identical to each other. But I guess that might be due to the protracted nature of its game development, as this was started in 1990, and it was 3 years before it finally got released, and during that time it went through quite a few developers. And if the art and animation style seems quite familiar, then one of the earliest artists on the project, and the one that effectively set the style for the game, left to join a new company, that would go on to make Premiere and Heimdall and you can see his style in those games, which were both started and released before this game finally hit the shelves. The reviews were not all that kind to the game, they all praised its artwork, but it was the gameplay that held it back, and to be honest I think they mostly got this one right. It's a very interesting and funny game, and it has some of its own cool touches, like the various waiting animations if you sit around too long. But playing an interactive cartoon starts to lose some of its charm when the gameplay can feel a little bit repetitive. If you like the look of the game then it is easy enough to get it on the various digital storefronts, but there are some issues. They use the PC version so you don't get those control improvements, but it also seems to be missing the digital sound effects, which really does take away from some of the comic setting and seeing it's not received any updates to fix it in the last 10 years, I doubt we'll be seeing any improvements anytime soon. So I feel it's time for us to leave the labyrinths of hell behind, and is anyone else in the mood for some pizza? Well until next time, I was the Gouldfish, that was the delivery route from hell, and this was Gouldfish on Games. Thanks for watching me and my mutt, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, there's buttons just down there that you can use to let me know, you won't have to fight your way through a maze to get to them. Or if you're wanting to go on your own quest, then you can check out two other videos that you can see on the screen right now, and I hope to see you again soon.